Here's your news for September 3rd, 2020, and your headlines for today include Drew McIntyre's opponent for WWE Survivor Series revealed. Why did McIntyre drag Triple H into a feud? Yet another WWE talent lands in AEW. WWE is bringing back previously released announcers soon. Roman Reigns to reportedly not compete at Hell in a Cell, possible brand switch. Wade Barrett confirms he's coming back to WWE NXT. WWE considering moving NXT to a new night. John Moxley finally opens up about Wednesday Night Wars. Brock Lesnar is accused of being a fraud and more. We are kicking off with news from Raw as after a quick backslide saved Drew McIntyre's WWE title at SummerSlam, Randy Orton punished him the next night on Raw with three punt kicks, severely injuring the champion in kayfabe. On this week's show, Orton earned another title shot by beating Keith Lee and Seth Rollins in a triple threat number one contenders match with their title match booked for Clash of Champions. Whilst fans may not be thrilled at seeing Orton and McIntyre face off again, it looks like fans will have to get used to it, as Tom Colohue reported that the feud will go to November, saying, Randy Orton was always going to get this rematch because the match between Drew McIntyre and Randy Orton, which is now booked for Clash of Champions, is supposedly part of a long-term feud that will likely run into Hell in a Cell as well and finish around Survivor Series time. It was always supposed to be in that position. But what do you think? Would you like to see this feud continue? Leave your opinions in the comments below. But for now, fans can expect McIntyre to put up one hell of a fight when he takes on WWE's Apex Predator. Clearly, Drew McIntyre is finding out that his championship is a huge target, as he's now having challenges from outside wrestling. A short while ago, British boxing star Tyson Fury challenged McIntyre to a match on Twitter, and now the Scottish psychopath has responded, and it seems he's more than ready to face the Gypsy King. McIntyre certainly didn't mince his words, saying he will kick Fury's quote, shiny bald head off that dad bod, and added that unlike Tyson, he doesn't duck a challenge. Concluding his comments by calling the Gypsy King a fraud, McIntyre then asked Triple H for a favor and requested the game to have a word with Fury. Fans will remember Fury's Crown Jewel 2019 victory over Braun Strowman, and though all we need now is for Triple H to make the right calls and arrange this huge match, we're interested in what you have to say. Do you want to see the two British champions collide? And if so, who should win? Leave your opinions in the comments. We're looking at WWE's April 15th releases now as Tay Conti has recently been spotted on AEW Dynamite holding some interesting paperwork. During the show, Conti posted a video of herself holding Dark Order paperwork, teasing that she'll join the group, and inserted a few mind-blown emojis for the caption. At this time, it's unclear if Conti has been given any actual contract by AEW, but with this tease that she'll be joining the Dark Order, which recently gained the AEW TNT title, it certainly seems like she'll be joining Anna Jay to boost the group's women's roster. Conti isn't the only WWE personality to join AEW, as former Performance Center coach Serena Deeb wrestled on Dynamite this week. On the show, Deeb came up short against NWA Women's Champion Thunder Rosa, who will face Hikaru Shida this weekend at All Out. Fans may remember Deeb as part of CM Punk's Straight Edge Society and competing in 2017's May Young Classic before she was hired as a trainer, where she worked until April this year. As both a trainer and on-screen talent, Deeb has proven herself to be a versatile asset in the ring, and it'll be interesting to see if AEW continues to use her going forward. We've spoken a lot about WWE's April 15th releases, as after some former employees have found success in other companies, WWE could be bringing one back. According to PW Insider, WWE is looking to bring back Nigel McGuinness, adding that he could return soon, though no other details about why he's coming back were provided. It's safe to assume that Mauro Ranallo's departure may be a factor in bringing McGuinness back, though it's worth noting that Wade Barrett is reportedly said to be signed as a full-time commentator. At this time, NXT's commentary team is Barrett, Vic Joseph, and Beth Phoenix, and with NXT UK set to return on September 17th, fans may soon hear the former Desmond Wolfe providing commentary for the overseas brand. Back to the ring now and Roman Reigns is on top again as a Paul Heyman guy and the new Universal Champion, but what can fans expect from this title reign? 
On the latest episode of Dropkick Discussions, Tom Colihu reported that Reigns is going to have a title run similar to Brock Lesnar, but with more title defenses than The Beast, the first of which will be this month at Clash of Champions. Colihu also noted that the long-term goal is for Roman and The Fiend to have a lengthy feud, with Bryan now chasing the gold, though fans shouldn't expect to see Reigns face anyone inside Hell in a Cell, as that match stipulation is going to someone else. It was also noted that there could be a brand switch between the WWE and Universal Championships, which would put Reigns back on Raw, the same show he forfeited his first Universal Championship on in 2018. Nearly two years after his last title reign was cut short, it's no wonder why WWE will push Reigns, now a heel, to the moon, as his grip on the Universal Championship may not end until WrestleMania 37. Over to NXT now, and after sitting in on commentary for the past two weeks, Wade Barrett will be back once again. Given that Mauro Ranallo has left, it appears that Barrett is filling in, and this may be long term following reports that both sides are talking about a new deal. After tweeting that he'll return to call the NXT title match between Finn Balor and Adam Cole, Barrett will join Vic Joseph and Beth Phoenix on Tuesday's NXT special once again, and if reports are true, fans can expect to hear plenty from the British brawler going forward. Speaking of the gold brand, this week's Fatal 4-Way Iron Man match for the vacant NXT title ended with no one leaving his champion, and now we know more about the match. On Wrestling Observer Live, Brian Alvarez reported that the four Iron Man competitors, Finn Balor, Adam Cole, Tommaso Ciampa, and Johnny Gargano, only found out about the stipulation a day before the match, and spoke about the controversial finish, saying, Every single one of them knew, man, we're going to work our asses off for a match that people are going to be really mad about afterwards. That's what these four guys went into the ring knowing, is that the fans are going to be really mad. Sure enough, the finish, which saw Cole and Balor tie with two points each, didn't please fans, and though the finish wasn't the fault of the superstars, hopefully an undisputed NXT champion will be crowned next week when these two face off. We've got some worrying news concerning The Rock now as the Brahma Bull, his wife Lauren, and his two daughters have all tested positive. On Instagram, the former WWE champion described their diagnosis as one of the most challenging and difficult they've gone through, mainly due to the fact that his family also tested positive. If there's a silver lining to this, it's that the Johnsons seem to be through the worst of it all. As he explained, Testing positive for COVID-19 is a lot different than recovering from nasty injuries, getting evicted, or being broke, which I've been more than a few times, he said. My number one priority is to always protect my family and loved ones. I wish it was only me that tested positive. It was my entire family, and it was a kick in the gut. We in a family are good. We're on the other end of it and no longer contagious. Thank God we're healthy. The Rock also said that thankfully his children didn't have much beyond a sore throat, though he and his wife had a much more difficult time, and added that though they've gotten through the worst of it, he knows plenty of people who haven't been so lucky, saying, We're counting our blessings right now. We're well aware you don't always get to the other end of COVID-19 stronger and healthier. I've had some of my best friends lose their parents to this virus that is so incredibly relentless and unforgiving. We're counting our blessings, but we're good. As always, we encourage everyone watching to practice proper measures, including social distancing, wearing masks, and being strict about having people over. As if someone as fit and healthy as the Brahma Bull can get it, and Kevin Nash has also revealed that he and his family tested positive, then it goes to show that no one is immune. The Rock isn't the only star to test positive lately though, as during a Twitch stream, AJ Styles revealed that he tested positive last month. Styles' reveal came shortly after The Rock went public about his test, and Styles went on to say, I also tested positive a couple of weeks ago, probably almost a month ago. I feel for people who have to deal with this, but I gotta say, I didn't have that many problems with it. Hopefully The Rock and his family, hopefully everybody is safe and everybody's taken care of and nobody has too bad of symptoms and stuff like that. It sucks, it's not good for anybody. Styles is just one of the few WWE personalities to speak about testing positive after a reported over 30 positive tests were conducted in late July. But most of those who tested positive haven't spoken publicly, and the total hasn't been confirmed by WWE. Renee Paquette said that WWE wasn't pleased when she came forward with news of her diagnosis, and whilst Styles is clearly better given that he's in storylines with Sami Zayn and Jeff Hardy, it again goes to show that people need to be careful at this time. 
Back to NXT now, as though WWE brought the gold brand to the USA Network on Wednesdays, this may soon change. According to WrestleVotes, WWE has been discussing moving NXT for the past month, though they noted that no decision was imminent, though the numbers for recent shows on Tuesday may impact the decision. It's worth noting that AEW have consistently defeated NXT on Wednesday nights, despite NXT winning the occasional week with an upswing in viewership, though Dynamite almost always wins on a week-to-week -week basis. Even if WWE does plan on moving the gold brand to Tuesdays, that'll put them in direct competition with Impact on Axis TV. And time will tell what is the fate of the black and gold brand. Over to AEW now, and there's been a lot said about Dynamite's viewership compared to WWE NXT, but one person who isn't too bothered is Jon Moxley. Speaking to Busted Open Radio, the AEW World Champion said he leaves it to other people to focus on ratings, saying, I don't stress about it. People give me high fives or whatever when I come into the building, like, ah, we whooped their ass last night. I'm like, that's cool, but I'm just focused on the people who are watching and make sure that we keep doing a good job for them. Nothing to stress about on a week-by-week -week basis. That's somebody else's job, not mine. Obviously, Moxley wants AEW to do well, though he's fine not worrying about being in competition with NXT. And given that Dynamite has consistently defeated the gold brand in the ratings, it seems Moxley's carefree attitude is working out just fine. And we're ending today with news from free agent Brock Lesnar, who's already getting called out in his old stomping ground of MMA. After John Jones fired a shot at Lesnar, saying, I'll Victor Belfort has also chimed in on Submission Radio, calling Brock a fraud. I think he's a fraud in MMA. But you know, he comes from WWE. He knows how to sell. But for MMA, he doesn't like to get hit. And I'm telling you, I can hit him pretty hard. So let's do BMA, me and you. You're a big man, I got you. I'm willing to fight big man, man. I'm not scared. The king of the jungle is the lion, not the elephant. So Brock Lesnar, you're right down my alley, my friend. We all know that Lesnar is happy enough sitting at home for as long as he likes, given that he's worked hard enough and made some incredibly savvy business deals for years. Now Lesnar can wait things out until a big enough offer comes to him, and at this time, he hasn't spoken to UFC or AEW yet. Though if he does want to do MMA again, he's got a $250,000 fine waiting for him after two failed drug tests in 2016, though that's small change to the Beast Incarnate.